So now we're going to have a look at some examples on using the cash. So, and what the benefits of the different methods of connecting uh, the device memories to the core itself. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our same loop that we were running earlier. So we're going to take our simple loop. And this time we're going to allocate our loop into SD RAM with the linker file. So we're going to allocate that particular loop to sit at C million hex, which will put us in one of the SD RAM banks that's on the uh, device we've got there. SD RAM's got some penalties. It's three main ones. The SD RAM is connected on the FMC, the external memory bus, and that is running at half the clock speed. So you've already gone from 216 megahertz now down to 108 megahertz for the clocking of the SD RAM. Then you've also got the row precharge time and cycles that go on inside the SD RAM chip. And you've also got the address phase. So with those three penalties there, half the core speed, I'm not sure how many microseconds that takes, and I'm not sure how many microseconds that takes, pretty much you're, you'd be expecting to see that our 2.048 cycle time is now going to get impacted quite heavily here. So you'd be expecting up to be four, possibly up to six cycles now, compared to what we had on the previous one. So this is going to show how effective the cache is um, inside the device. So if you now go into example number two in your projects, and I do promise you coffee after this, um, and we run the example at there, and we will do the comparison to what we had to start with, which is running it from the tightly coupled memory. And then what happens when we run it without cache? And then when we enable the cache. So you can see the benefits of how the cache reacts as we run the application. So if you run your example, you should hopefully get from the DTCM, tightly coupled RAM, you should get about 1,018 cycles. So fairly similar, so about two cycles again. And then I've got about 6,500 cycles for running without the decache enabled which we reckoned it will be about three times slower uh, with all those penalties that we saw appearing. And then as we enable the cache, our performance slowly improves. It takes two cycles, but it improves to near enough exactly the same as running from the tightly coupled memory. Why we see a difference between the first run with the cache enabled and the second run with the cache enabled. Cache it, correct. So on the first pass, you will get cache miss. Um, so every now and then you will have to go off to the SD RAM, read in the row, bring it into the cache, and then execute. But you won't get it every time because you will be reading a row at a time from the SD RAM and loading that row into the cache. So, so it won't always happen, the cache in this. So what actually goes on inside the core? Uh, when you want byte number two, you go off to the SD RAM, you load the information in. If you don't have the cache enabled, when you want byte number six, 
you have to go off to the SDRAM again and load it into the core itself. That's why you get about 6,600 cycles to do the same simple loop. When you've enabled the cache, you want byte 2. As you said, you'll get a cache miss. It'll go off, but rather than just take byte number 2, it'll take the whole row that byte number 2 sits in. So therefore, now when we want byte number 6, it doesn't have to go to the SD RAM. It's already sat inside the cache. So you'll get a, probably around a 50% cache miss, depending on how small or how large your code is. The bigger your code, the higher the miss rate you'll get until you fill the cache up as you've gone round the algorithm at least once. So, so therefore, every time there is a cache miss, we will do a complete line fill from the memory into the cache. So this is why the size of the cache is dependent on the speed of your core is running. So therefore, we've now got the cache system to compensate for slow memories. So that's the benefit of the cache system. Works exactly the same for data as well. If you're pulling variables from a data table, the same principles of cache miss, cache hit will work and it will take the entire row every time you get the cache miss and load it into the RAM.